when you're talking about the difference between like uh, what someone's attracted to for a one night hookup versus what someone's attracted to in a relationship, that has to do with the whole concept of having the opportunity to spread your genes without any commitment, right? So like someone who is what you would call hot and uh, you know promiscuous. The attractiveness to that is that this is an opportunity for the male to spread their genetics without having to work too hard. Uh, yeah. The way I would phrase it is uh, um, that that is the um, result, so to speak. Uh, men don't think about that consciously, right? You know, they're just – Right. They're it's, just, it's, uh, it's a they, natural cycle. They find this cycle. woman attractive and they want to have sex with her. Right, uh, and they're not thinking. Just like when you eat food, you're not thinking. Uh, although some may now, but most people don't think. Oh, what is the underlying nutritive logic that led to my survival? You know, they just say, "Oh, this smells good. It tastes good. I'm going to eat it." Right. You know, and so we're not conscious of the underlying logic that drove the evolution of these uh, attractions in the, in this case. But your question also raises the interesting issue of um, males versus females. You know, so f for so, so, and this gets to a fundamental sex difference in our reproductive biology, which is referred to as um, it's kind of a clunky phrase, but uh, obligatory parental investment. So, uh, in other words, what is the minimum obligatory parental investment that a man versus a woman has to put in to produce one child? And for men. The minimum, the absolute bare minimum, is is one act of sex. You know that can result in a child. For women, the minimum is that nine months of pregnancy, mm. which is, which is huge. Uh, and so this has actually been called uh, the 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 Darwinian paradox or the Darwinian puzzle, is that we know that given that asymmetry in investment, we know that um, it has been beneficial in the currency of reproductive success for men to have sex with a variety of women. Okay, that's fairly straightforward. Um, but why do women do it? Because we know women also engage in short-term mating. They engage in affair mating. So estimates vary, but say somewhere between, say, 20 and 35, 40 percent of women have affairs, even if they're in a committed long-term relationship. Interesting issue. Well, what do they get out of it? They don't increase their direct reproductive success and never could have because the, the, unless their partner happened to be infertile, the most they can have is basically one kid a year. Uh, and so adding additional sex partners doesn't do anything for their reproductive success. Okay, and so it's been a puzzle and there have been, you know, maybe four or five leading hypotheses about why women do it. And uh, this is a, one area where I've changed my mind on uh, pretty dramatically. So uh, early on, a former student of mine, Marty Hazelton, who's now a professor at UCLA, and other friends and colleagues like Steve Gangestead and Randy Thornhill, put forward this idea that the reason that women do it is that they're pursuing a dual mating strategy. That is, they're trying to get investment from one guy, like the good dads, uh, but good genes from another guy. Uh, oh, wow.